Because when it comes to tongues, it is the Holy Ghost praying through. So someone else takes over. Now, we are in a different age than the apostles. And I am not about to say that tongues have ceased or anything else, but if there's ever been a competition between two countries, you have one country that has high technology and the other one trying to catch up. What are they doing? They are manipulating, they are trying to copy and duplicate that person's technology. We are in a warfare with the devil. And what I mean by we are in a different age than the apostles is the enemy has finally got his hands on mimicking the gifts. There are Catholics that speak in tongues now. And if a Catholic nun who speaks in tongues and is not saved, but they're praying in tongues because the enemy has overtaken them, I would think that their mind scan would look very similar to the Pentecostal up there. Why? Because something else took over. Does that make sense? I am only throwing that out as a warning because I have spent enough of my life wondering, God, how can you use this person to give tongues or interpretation when I see their lifestyle and it does not show that that is one of a Christian? Because the gifts of God are without repentance for one. So A, we have the enemy with a copy of the gifts and can make it seem like it's the real thing. And an individual who has once received the baptism of the Holy Ghost and has turned from God if God chooses to use that individual, they can still be used in tongues and interpretation. Because maybe no one else is willing. So do not judge the fact that a person is a Christian by tongues or the, their use in the gifts of the Spirit alone. That is why we need to know them by their fruits and why our spirit bears witness with their spirit. If you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost and you stray from God, and you decide to pray if you've been practicing tongues, even though you've gone straight to a degree, does that mean that you can't speak in tongues anymore? No. The gifts of God are without repentance. But does that mean that you're saved and you're a Christian? No, it does not. And I only throw that out because I spent enough of my own life trying to figure out, God, how can you use this person? And I know they're not saved. Because once, once the Lord gives you the gift, he never takes the tongue. He doesn't. But like I said, I've literally spent years of my life trying to contemplate that one. Dude, I, I seen a woman. She was one that baptized, come back, baptized, come back. And yet, she thought uh, the album thumb and it was a good And they asked the first hour that she not been saved because, because he said, because once the Lord gave you something, he only can take away exactly. And I don't throw that out to confuse anybody, but as a mere warning. Don't judge somebody's spirituality by God using them more. You can renew it. You can. And I don't disagree, but like I said, don't judge it by that alone. Because otherwise you might be fooled. There might be a Catholic that speaks in tongues and it's not of God. But it's of the devil. So we need to be careful, but when we speak in other tongues, the language could be heavenly, it could be earthly, but one thing is sure, it's not a language we know, and it comes from the Holy Ghost. At this point, yes, bro. Uh, just a quick question. One of the things that keeps coming to my mind when I'm studying through this is the baptism of the Holy Spirit, is that something that we as believers or, or saved uh, are able to seek or to Absolutely. initiate on our own, I guess I should say, or is it something that comes to us at a certain point from God? When from the moment that we are saved, we are to be seeking the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Why don't we turn to Acts chapter 19? Acts 19.
Acts chapter 19, and we're going to read the first couple of verses. And we're going to read down to verse 6. Verse 1. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus. And finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? And they said unto them, We have not heard so much as whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, Then what, then where, that's what it Unto what then were ye baptized? And they said, Unto John's baptism. Then said Paul, John barely baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him and should come unto after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. And when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came unto them, came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. Here we have a group of people at Ephesus. They were saved. They knew Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. How do we know this from Scripture? <clears throat> when Paul asked, asked them, were they baptized, what did they say? They were baptized unto whose? John. John. And what was John's baptism? We find that in verse 4 in here. The baptism of repentance. The baptism of repentance. So what is the baptism of repentance? It's not big theological or hard. It's simply salvation. Accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. That is the gospel that John the Baptist preached was salvation through Jesus Christ. Behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sins of the world. John couldn't baptize with fire. He could only baptize with water. When we get baptized with water, what, it, like, oh, what is that? It is a symbolic act of that, that we've accepted Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. It is salvation. We are going down and burying the dead man and coming up as the new man in Christ. That is just a symbolic act that we do, but it is salvation in a nutshell. What was John the Baptist doing? He was baptizing people in water. He was baptizing them or bringing them into salvation. That he was, and I don't mean that John was giving them salvation, but he was pointing them to Jesus Christ. He was the voice in the wilderness saying, prepare ye the way of the Lord. He brought people to Christ, salvation. And that's all these Ephesian believers knew. All they knew was salvation. That's all they had. And when Paul asked them, have you had the baptism of the Holy Ghost? And they said, we didn't even know such a thing existed. So there are two different things. The baptism of the Holy Ghost is not the baptism of salvation. Paul clearly puts a distinction here. There's the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and there's repentance. So these Ephesian believers only have salvation. And when they said that we did not hear such a thing, what did Paul do? He prayed for them that they should receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid hands, his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came upon them. Now the Bible here doesn't say that they speak with other tongues, but when we look at the early church, if they knew without a shadow of doubt that the evidence of the baptism of the Holy Ghost was speaking in other tongues, there really was no need for them to repeat it, and they received the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues every time it happened. So Scripture falls silent and just says that they were baptized with the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost came upon them, and then they prophesied. So here we have a group of people who were saved, but when they found out that there was more for them, they wanted it. So, the long answer to the short question is this. Once you, receive the once you receive salvation, then you need to be seeking the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And if you do not receive it right away, keep seeking the baptism of the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> and we didn't get to really talk about the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And I don't want to call it steps, but there are requirements for receiving it. And just throwing it out here is, you need to be submitted to God. If there are things in your life that you're not willing to hand over to God, the baptism of the Holy Ghost will not 
occur in your life until you handed those things over to God. Because the baptism of the Holy Ghost... Let me back up. When we pray in tongues, who's praying through us? The Holy Ghost. Spirit, Holy Ghost. How can he pray through us if there are things that are preventing him from even entering into us in the first place to baptize us? We're hindering him. We're stopping him. Maybe you might say, well, how do I know that there are things in my life that are preventing me from getting the baptism of the Holy Ghost? Well, let's face it. First of all, there are times in our life where we know that there are things we're not real willing to surrender to God. We know that without a shadow of a doubt. Then we need to know, make sure that we get that right with God. That we get it covered under the blood. Even if it's not sin, maybe we're saying, well, God, I don't want to do that. No, we need to be completely, 100% submitted to God. The other thing, too, is sometimes there are things in our own life that we're not sure of, but when we're seeking the baptism of the Holy Ghost, God will bring it to light and he will reveal it to us and say, you need to get this taken care of first. And if you get that taken care of, well, then the baptism of the Holy Ghost will come. I suppose it happened to this one preacher. Every preacher said he was sitting and sitting. And he went everywhere trying to receive the Holy Ghost until one day, he said, Lord, I don't care where it's going to fill me. Mm -hmm. it's the Holy Ghost. I want it. And you know where he got filled? In his office at work. Absolutely, brother. Because he was determined. He said, he put everything aside. He said, Lord, forever. It don't matter. And he was a fault. He don't know how he made it throughout that day. He was feeling from those guys. Absolutely, absolutely. And he said he had the devil on the run ever since. <laughs> yeah. Now, does that mean that you cannot get receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost as soon as you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? It does not mean that at all. You can get the baptism of the Holy Ghost right away. As, right away. Absolutely. I'm trying to find the passage. I think it was. Uh, it's either ten or. or is it there? I think I'm in the wrong chapter altogether. Was it 13? Yes, where? Yeah, I realize that, but when Paul was giving his testimony, I don't think it was until he was before the council at Jerusalem. Because it was. Long story short, we're out of time. And I don't have time to do a search, so unfortunately you'll just have to take my word for it. But feel free and look it up. I can't remember if it was in the Cornelius account there. What about the one where uh, Peter was called to that uh, Italian? That's exactly what I'm talking, brother. And they were filled with the Holy Ghost. We are. And it's, the account is in Acts chapter 9 and 10. Isn't that the 11th chapter or the 10th chapter of Acts? Actually, it might be 10 and 11. Chapters 10 and 11 is the account, but there's also another chapter, I think about 12 or 13, where Peter is standing before the Jerusalem Council giving his testimony about what happened here because you've got to keep in mind, and I apologize for speeding up my speech a little bit, but we are out of time. But regardless, long story short, uh, the Jew uh, early disciples believed that uh, everything that was happening was for them. And then Jesus gave Peter a vision, take it to the Gentiles. Well, the Gentiles were dogs, they didn't want to go there, but Peter went there anyhow. Yeah. Peter goes to the house of a, a centurion, I believe, named Cornelius. And there the, we will find in the book of uh, Acts chapter 10 and 11 that Cornelius was a devout man who fasted, worshipped God, he prayed and fasted often, but he did not have salvation. And we find that Peter was sent there that they may receive salvation, and when Peter came... Gave, gives his testimony of what happened there. I can't remember if it's in chapter 10 and 11 or if it's in another chapter in Acts. But I think it was when he was standing before the council because he said that they received it just like we did at the beginning. Yeah, that's what it said. And what's he referring to? Did he say that they received the baptism of the Holy Ghost with tongues? No, but he said they received it like we did at the beginning. Being astounded and saying, they got the Holy Ghost just like we got it. So, Cornelius got saved and baptized with the baptism of the Holy Ghost all in one, one shot, one day, whatever you want to call it. So it is something that can be occur at one spot, but sometimes it takes us a little bit longer. I was saved for years before I got the baptism of the Holy Ghost. 
I saw it for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Why didn't I get it? A, I begged and pleaded with God instead of just worshiping. And B, there was something that I needed to surrender before God could give me the baptism of the Holy Ghost. With that being said, we're out of time. We'll prepare our hearts for service, and we'll come back next week, Lord willing. Yeah, church don't slow us down anyway. What's and that? I said, church don't slow us down anyway. Gives us more time to get our hearts and minds right with God and to make sure they're in tune. Yeah. Gracious Heavenly Father, we give you all praise and glory for everything you've done for us and shall continue to do. Amen. Lord, we thank you that you're God who reigns on high and that there's none like you, Lord. Now, even right now, we rebuke every attack of the enemy that should come our way. We pray that you set your angels at the four corners of the property above and below, that no attack of the enemy may penetrate. I pray that our hearts and our minds would be in one mindset and one accord, that we may worship you in sincerity and truth, that the Holy Ghost may move, making himself visible if he so chooses, Lord. I pray, Lord, that we would be surrendered completely over to you, Lord, willing to receive whatever you have for us today. And when the song leader and the musicians, as they lead us in the song, should have us sing. Pray, I pray, Lord, that you give them a special blessing as they praise you upon the string instruments and the vocal cords. Anoint the pastor's mind and his lips as he brings forth your words today. I give, pray, Lord, that you give him a special blessing as well. Anoint our minds and our hearts that they would be good soil for your word to follow on. That we may remember it throughout the week, Lord, and meditate upon and upon our right beds. But even greater than that, that it would take root in our hearts, that we'd be drawn closer to you than ever before. We ask all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.